So we grinding right now. We at the gym, you know, get your mind right. But this is a couple reasons why hackers don't need a password to spy on you. You probably think your phone is safe. A password, face ID, maybe even a VPN. What else could a hacker possibly do? But here's the truth. They don't need your password. They don't need you to click anything. In some cases, they don't even need you to touch your phone. Your camera, microphone, and messages could already be compromised, and you wouldn't have a clue. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how hackers spy on phones, the techniques they use, and most importantly, how you can stop them before it's too late. I ain't gonna lie to you. Every now and then, I get a random SMS or text message saying to click on the link or hit this link or something. Yo, hacking, scamming, they got ever more harder to dig to you. Like, it's hard to see what a scam look like, and it's hard to see how to avoid a scam in the first place. So, this would be an interesting video. But here's the thing. What I can show you on YouTube is just the surface level. If you really want to understand how these attacks work, how spyware gets deployed, how exploits unfold in real time, how a simple vulnerability turns into a full-scale breach, you have to go deeper. The problem. I can't show you everything here. YouTube has its limits. The real methods, the advanced payloads, the kind of exploits that actually work in the wild, those get taken down. And I'm not here to give you watered down, censored content. If you want the raw, unfiltered side of ethical hacking, the stuff that doesn't make it to YouTube, you know where to find it. Having some weird app. If you avoid those, you're good, right? Hmm? Not exactly. Hackers don't always need you to click on anything. In fact, some of the most dangerous spyware in the world can infect your phone without you ever touching a thing. Take Pegasus spyware, for example. Governments and cyber criminals have used it to hack into phones with a single missed call. No answering, no clicking, just receiving a call, and boom, your device is compromised, and that's not even the worst part. Once inside, it has full control over your camera, microphone, messages, and even encrypted apps like WhatsApp and Signal. But let's break it down further. How do hackers actually... Ah, damn, Pegasus sound like the, the old Cobalt project. Like, you see how... Wait, what was it? I forgot what the project is called. It was a, it was a, it's a game software project, right? Where it's already on your C drive. And I guess it was like an anti spyware or something type of thing for gaming, but hackers used it to remote access into either people's uh, hardware or just get some sort of credential just because it's like a built in. Uh, gaming anti thing, which is like insane to think about. Like everyone could get hacked at any point in time. Spy on phones. One of the easiest ways is through malicious apps and fake updates. Ever downloaded a simple flashlight or weather app? Well, back in 2019, a flashlight app with millions of downloads was caught secretly stealing user data, tracking locations, recording calls, and even listening through the microphone. It looked completely normal. And it's not just shady apps. Hackers also use fake update notifications. You're browsing, and suddenly a pop-up appears saying, your phone is at risk, update now. You tap it, thinking it's a security patch, but in reality, you just installed malware that gives an attacker complete access to your device. These fake updates are so convincing that even tech-savvy people fall yeah. for them. Another common method is public Wi-Fi attacks, also known as man-in-the-middle attacks. Picture this. Yeah, and I also did another video on how people don't even need the exact fucking they go hack you off a of wi-fi basically which is insane to think about like hacking has gotten so much better that you don't even need a hardware or actual hacking setup you could just walk outside and like you from that shit is just kind of like insane to think about how easy it is to hack something in 2025 you're at a coffee shop and you see a network called starbucks free wi-fi you connect because well it's free wi-fi but here's the thing what if a hacker set up that network the moment you join, everything you do, your passwords, your messages, your emails, can be intercepted in real time. And it's not just about stealing your login credentials. If a hacker is running a packet sniffer, they can see which apps you're using, what sites you visit, and even inject malware into your browsing session without you realizing it. And then there's social engineering, one of the oldest and most effective hacking methods out there. Hackers don't... It's not hacking only. Social engineering is a form of programming as well. We just don't use it as programmers because we always kind of think that we write. So there's nothing to kind of social engineer from another party. We kind of just have to, I guess, backtrack and kind of see where the end is so we could backtrack towards that. But uh, social engineering is just one of the oldest tricks in the book, to be honest with you, on how to get information or make information. 
always need to break into your phone using fancy exploits. Sometimes they just trick you into giving them access. Ever gotten an email saying, your Netflix account is locked? Click here to verify. You panic, click the link, and log in, except that page wasn't Netflix. It was a fake login page controlled by a hacker, and now they have your password. The same thing happens with SMS phishing, like those your packages deleted. See, I was telling you that they be, they be sending you, yo, you know what the issue is for SMS? I don't know if Apple updated it, but there's a lot of links. It can't be sent as the mess. Like the way you see it here, it can't be sent and you can't click on the HTTP. You actually got to type the HTTP link all the way out, almost as if Apple is already sniffing out links that might be scam or fishy. Because this was more of a recent thing. Like last month, I wasn't able to do it. I don't know if it's just me, but every single text. Okay. If the link isn't sent separately, which is like kind of weird, you know, or there's certain times it'll show, but a lot of the time, if, because it's scam text, a lot of the times if the contact is uh, recognized or it just overall the text that looks like it has a link scam, then you know what I mean? Like it'll, it won't, Apple won't let you click on it anymore. I don't know if this is an Android device though. Delayed messages with a tracking link that installs spyware on your phone the moment you tap it. If you've ever received a call from someone claiming to be your bank, asking for verification details, there's a good chance it was a scam designed to get enough information to reset your accounts. And then we have the scariest kind of spyware, the kind that governments and high profile hackers use. Pegasus, for example, doesn't need you to install anything. It can infect your device through a simple iMessage exploit, completely bypassing security protections. And once it's in, it can silently record everything, your calls, your messages, your camera feed, without you ever seeing a single sign that anything is wrong. Even big names like Jeff Bezos have fallen victim to this type of hacking, proving that no one is truly... Nah, I'm not surprised that people fall victim to this. Honestly, I'm lucky because my phone is broken, so there's not a lot of, like, personal information I can use because, I like my buttons don't work so like pattern wise i'm all off if someone is spying on me right now they can't really see if my phone is broken because to them if they remote access into my device anyways it would just look like a erratic person or a baby has the phone like if me like nothing would show like nothing would show like consistent be safe so if you're looking to go beyond the basics go to cyberflows academy see you there have a wonderful day I ain't gonna lie to you. Hacking has gotten crazy in 2025, which is why I'm pivoting. Yeah, I'm a program slash hacker now. Uh, again, Polygon, but I want to focus more on the hacking side and just to see how much I can learn. Hope y'all like the video, and I'll make sure I leave you a link in the bio. Like, comment, subscribe. We out of here.